Arsenal are on the pitch. They think it's all over. It is now. Welcome to the final episode of this series of They Think It's All Over. After six programmes, the series score is three all. Gary is on the edge of his seat and David couldn't give a toss as usual. <laughs> With David and Jonathan this week is a stand-up comedian who won Best New Act of the Year in 1989. And if you missed it, he's still doing it now. <laughs> Jeffrey. Weird Gary and Rory is the former Scotland skipper, now captain of Coventry, who's recently been out for a year with an injury, during which time he's missed out on win bonuses totalling £8.40. <laughs> Gary McAllister. We open the show by looking at the wretched excuses given by sportsmen to cover up sporting shame. Gary, Rory and Gary, this is the kind of play that saw David Ginola voted 1999's Footballer of the Year. Gate. And Ginola! What a strike by the Frenchman! Out to Ginola. Getting a bit more freedom now. Takes on Eden. Takes on the zoo. Oh, wonderful, wonderful goal by David Ginola! Now, despite those silky skills, Ginola has been left out in the cold by the French national side and missed out on a World Cup winner's medal. According to Ginola himself, why doesn't he get picked for France? Gary's team. Let me just say, I've got two people called Gary on my side. Uh, I'm going to call McAllister Gary M and Lineker the Jug-Eared Goal Hanger. <laughs> Good. To avoid confusion. Yeah. I had a very pleasant evening with Ginola once. Because you know from behind, he's got lovely hair, by the way. And uh, from behind, he looks rather like a young lady. Yeah. And that's why now I'll always go to the missionary position first. <laughs> and not le position chien woof woof, as they <laughs> in less civilised parts of the world. <laughs> it's all very well scoring those great goals, but he doesn't track back, does he? He no. doesn't track back. He yeah, doesn't help out not the like I used to do. No, That's right. <laughs> got Alzheimer's, have you? <laughs> I, I tell you what, the last two years of my career, when I played mm. in Japan, mm. I, was, I always came back for corners. Bring back the big man, they used to say. <laughs> I just, I just think he might be just far too pretty to be. Did he That's not say he said, something like, I'm too, too, I'm too, too handsome. good looking to too be Absolutely in right for three points, so yeah. Oh That's not a problem you're ever going to have, Gary, is it? <laughs> I might have called you Huggy Bear. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I look pretty now you've bought me this suit. Yeah. <laughs> The truth, according to Ginola anyway, is that he was too good looking to be picked for France because it would make all the other players jealous and be bad for morale. David Ginola won the Hair Son of the Year award in 1996. Ray Wilkins won it in 1974, although he was sadly unable to defend the trophy in 1975. <laughs> Ginola has denied allegations that he repeatedly dived during this year's Worthington Cup final, although it was him who got Princess Anne sent off during the pre-match handshakes. <laughs> David, Jonathan and Jeff, we take you back to Euro 96, England against Scotland. England won up, but Scotland about to equalise with a Gary McAllister penalty. However, things went slightly wrong for Scotland from that moment on. It's Gary McAllister. Oh, saved by Seaman. Gary McAllister stunned by a wonderful reaction save. However, that penalty miss wasn't in any way Gary's fault. What was the real reason? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was the real reason, David? I fell to school. Well, he couldn't say it was because his hair got in his eyes, could he, really? <laughs> you had a bit more back then, didn't you? It was a bit more of a, it was just kind of like a more of a pubic fuzz on top back then. <laughs> Now you've wisely gone for the slimline look. It's not a Weetabix type thing. I can't like, understand like a word you're saying. <laughs> I see the mouth moving. You know what? I feel quite angry on your behalf, Gary. So you should, actually. May I defend you, sir? Please, please. You no. come down here from your impoverished part of the world where they live in small boroughs called burrows, I believe, <laughs> and find some wide barrow boy of a cockney monkey merchant showing a moment when you look like a complete prick in front of everyone and they laugh. <laughs> we 
would love to show some footage of him scoring a penalty against England during Euro 96, but he didn't do it, quite honestly. <laughs> yeah, but I scored against Belarus. Yeah. And Minsk. <laughs> but so did I. <laughs> <laughs> You just fancy doing a Pizza Hut commercial, did you? <laughs> <laughs> what is it with Pizza Hut? They always have losers on that commercial. Yeah. <laughs> There's an excuse here, is there? And, um, Sorry, I don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> you see, once again, here we are, <laughs> being mocked by a bloke with what appears to be, what is that, an unfurled golf ball for a hat. <laughs> At least I didn't scrape my clothes off an Indian restaurant wall. <laughs> Maybe you guys had all booked your holidays and didn't want to lose Funny your deposit. <laughs> <laughs> there was a couple of nice ones. <laughs> um, didn't Yuri Geller? Yuri Geller, yeah. Claim that using the uh, power of his brain alone, he had moved the ball. Yeah, Was I'll it? give you three points for that. Yuri yeah. Geller, yeah. Yes, the excuse given, not by Gary here, I should add, for missing the penalty, was that the ball was moved telepathically by Yuri Geller as Gary was about to kick it. As you can see, if you look carefully. There you go. Yeah. You see it? Yeah. Geller, who was hovering over the stadium in a helicopter, although if he's that clever, why did he need a helicopter, claimed afterwards that he willed the ball to move, saying that was pure telepathy. I'm so pleased. Geller also said, when the penalty was taken, I willed David Seaman to jump to his right. Curiously enough, we were all looking up at a helicopter, willing Yuri to jump to his left. <laughs> Gary is captain of Coventry, a city best known as the home of Lady Godiva, who rode naked through the streets in the year 1060. It was part of the general celebrations after Coventry had yet again narrowly avoided relegation. <laughs> and at the end of that round, Gary's team have three points, and David's team have three points. It's time now for that round where we play a curious piece of sporting footage and pose the question, what's going on? David's team, feast your eyes on this. There come. So, David Steen, what was that all about? I've no idea, but Danny Bear's licking her lips with anticipation. <laughs> <laughs> could, we have have a no look, could we have a look at the last shot again? Yes, I, I think, think so. From beyond, is it just me or is that, is that Jeremy Clarkson? <laughs> 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 well, are we looking at one of Rue Hullett's less successful foreign transfers there? That, <laughs> you didn't even bother watching the video, it just said Pedro El Toro, good command of the arena, I thought I'll have him. Yeah. <laughs> Was it uh, Big Ron's new coat being delivered? <laughs> <laughs> and that's the winner of the best behaved Millwall supporter trophy. <laughs> <laughs> Would I be right if he has like a team mascot that's got wildly loose? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, hang on, three no, hang on. Can, you, can I just say that that is the, can I get an extra point for saying it's the FC Zurich mascot called Maradona? I was just about to say Ooh. that. You were, no, you weren't, you well, liar. All I'm saying is you barged in there like a big gay bear. <laughs> <laughs> The gay bear. Remember, that, remember that cartoon series, The Hair Bear Bug? <laughs> You're all well, about that. Well, oh, oh, Mr. Peebly to you. <laughs> I'm not going to let you have given that, Nick. I'm no, sorry. he doesn't get a bonus point. Good, no, you, you, seem, you seem to have got it. Yeah. The ball was, in <laughs> fact, a mascot which escaped during a pre-match kickabout. His name's Maradona, and he is indeed the mascot of FC Zurich. Point, please. Come on. The club decided to call the ball Maradona after noticing that he weighs a ton, he charges a lot, and he spends most of the time snorting. <laughs> the opposition fans are already working on a chant for next season, who's in all the pies? <laughs> Maradona is only with the club because he escaped from the local knackers yard and the manager took pity. Much the same reason that Mark Hughes is at Southampton. <laughs> Gary's team, this is the window of Bim's department store in Middlesbrough. But what is going on? I'll tell you what. Graham or so is doing himself no favours on that video, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs>
is, is that a way of making the pools panel more interesting? <laughs> There's Des Lynham giving the score on the new Love Budget Grandstand, isn't there? <laughs> Gather showing off his IQ. 32. Was it 302? I, I read maybe? it, yeah. <laughs> 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 no, 3.2. I'd recognise that face anywhere. Yeah. It's obviously Ian Dowie doing a shop opening. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the club sponsor advertising its new one ring service. <laughs> 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 I've seen this before. I've seen have it you? before. That is a fellow Scott. Mm -hmm. uh, Bernie Slavin, mm -hmm. who played for the famous Albion Rovers mm -hmm. before he went to Middlesbrough. Mm -hmm. now, he claimed he would show his backside in the department store window if Middlesbrough beat Manchester United at Old Trafford. Absolutely correct for three right. points. Yeah. Yes, that rear view belonged to ex-Middlesbrough stalwart Bernie Slaven. Before Borough played Manchester United at Old Trafford, Slaven made this promise on Century Radio. If Middlesbrough do win at Old Trafford, yes. you've, you've been, you're becoming a pessimistic old legend again. <laughs> what would you do? Uh, I'd go as far as I would flash my bum in Ben's window. And then this happened. Gary Neville, Dean, Ricard, what a mistake. <laughs> Won by Johnson. Dean Gordon! Here's Brian Dean. It's three. Borough won the match 3-2, so Bernie made good his promise by displaying his bum in the window of Bin's department store. It was a good job he kept his pants on. Two minutes later, that shop window was ram raided by a Ford Cortina. <laughs> <laughs> and if you go there, you can still see the skid marks. <laughs> Middlesbrough now have the most elderly squad in the Premiership. In fact, they're so old, they lie awake at night worrying about the cost of the undersoil heating. <laughs> and so at the end of that round, Gary's team have six points and David's team have six points. Oh, no. It's round three, and that means photo fit. We've blended three faces into one deformed mess. David's team, who did these features once belong to? <laughs> Maybe, you, know, you want to be careful because you're at the moment because you were blonde when you were y y quite y y yep, 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 yep. <laughs> not easy to say is it <laughs> well I was just trying to be polite about your age um, you, but when you used to be a blonde sort of bloke didn't you well yeah well, now you're the silver fox but you've got to be careful because when you get older you, there's the example your hair tends to turn the colour which I believe on the Dulux chart is called monkey piss yellow <laughs> <laughs> you want to keep an eye out <laughs> so I'm just thinking of you <laughs> no I just don't the, the, yeah the hair Looks like Judith Chalmers after a holiday too many, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> Those sun lamps are a dangerous thing, ladies and gentlemen. Is it a little bit Chris Eubank? Yep. Yeah, we've got him. Is the top bit Yaz? <laughs> 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 the only way is down. <laughs> yeah. uh, Tommy, is that uh, you and Thomas? Uh-huh, probably. The top is you and Thomas. Is the bottom bit Mr. Gary over there? No. Is it... Um... Is it Linda Evangelista? <laughs> Say Caprice. Is it Caprice? No. <laughs> now let's split it up and now see it's who it is. Dublin, it? No, it's not. You and Thomas, you've got. Chris Eubank, you've got. And Chris Boardman. Oh, oh God. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, for an extra point, there is a connection between you and Thomas, Chris Eubank, and Chris Boardman. Uh, oh. What is it? All world champions? Oh. That's not the connection. Three things you think about when you're having sex and don't want to come. <laughs> should, should be worth the point. Yeah. What is it, Nick? The link is that they all claim to dislike the sport that they play. Chris Eubank has always said he hates boxing and only fights for the money. Chris Boardman is on record as saying he can't stand cycling. And Ewan Thomas says he dislikes running the 400 metres because every time he wins, he's violently sick afterwards. Ewan Thomas complained when Michael Owen beat him to last year's Sports Personality of the Year, but to be quite honest, the result was a fix because they didn't want him throwing up over the Duchess of Kent. <laughs> Chris Eubank has now become a Muslim. He was going to be a Christian, but he gave it up when he got to the bit about St Francis of Assisi saving a boy. <laughs> Thank you very much. Gary's team, three for you to pick out. Wasn't he the lead singer with Dex's Midnight Runners? <laughs> I don't even want to know what he's spitting out. Is it semen? 
I just want the names of the people. It's the world... It's the world rabies champion. <laughs> Martin Johnson, the eyes. England captain. Martin Johnson, yeah. That's got to be, um, what's the name of that slaphead eye tie who plays with Chelsea? Yeah, I think it's right. The alley. That's the one, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Jen, look at if you're watching. And the hair? What's wrong with it? Oh, sorry. <laughs> where do I start? <laughs> Rory. Is that that runner we had on the show where Jeff was sitting? In fact, Denise, what's she called? Denise Lewis. Denise, Denise, Denise Lewis. Lewis, yeah, let's split it up and see if you're right. Mm. Denise Lewis, Martin Johnson, and Gianluca Vialli. What's he spitting out there then? Um, chewing gum. Is it? Mm. It does look horribly like a condom though, doesn't it? <laughs> or is that only me? Well, perhaps he can't read English. <laughs> and then he's got, <laughs> got it from the vending machine. <laughs> And some of them have lovely flavours, I Yeah, they do, yeah. Okay, now there's also a, there's a link between these three, again, for a bonus point. Can you tell us what it is? I think these two here, well, Martin Johnson definitely, in the Midlands he was advertising in the nude. Mm. Totally yeah. bitter, was it? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And I can remember seeing Denise Lewis naked, painted. I don't know what she was advertising. Mm -hmm. So I'd go for, I think Bialy's advertised some boots. Boots? Naked. Football boots. Yep, I'll so give you I'll an extra point for that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. oh. Well done. <laughs> yeah, the connection is that they've all posed naked. Here's Martin Johnson naked. Here's Gianluca Vialli naked last year. It would be a lot more explicit if they took it this year. No trophies. <laughs> And sadly, we're not allowed to show you the picture of Denise Lewis with no clothes on, but if you're feeling disappointed, here's another famous ample-breasted sports star in the nude. <laughs> Gianluca Vialli grew up on a big farm in northern Italy where his family employed the crop rotation system. Eventually, a field of beans got so pissed off at being left out that it asked for a transfer to another farm. <laughs> When Gianluca Vialli first got the Chelsea job, the AC Milan manager, Fabio Capello, said it's like giving a 15-year-old the keys to a Ferrari. Well, that's better than giving a 15-year-old the keys to Graham Ricks's hotel room. <laughs> When Denise was a guest on this programme, she said, What a great time I had. I never realised how much of the programme is cut out. Whatever gave you that, on top of Stu Barker. <laughs> <laughs> now, round nine. <laughs> and at the end of that round, at the end of that round, David's team have eight points and Gary's team have ten. With your simple glass of mathematics, it may appear they have more points than us, but if you were to employ the Duckworth-Lewis method of scoring, then you'd find that we are way in the lead. <laughs> now, time once again for our regulars to feel up the famous as we play Field the Sportsman. David and Jonathan, you're up first, if you'd like to take your positions, taking your blindfolds with you. You have 90 seconds to work out who you're touching. I pray it's a young lady. <laughs> so do I, Jonathan. We've never had a woman, have we? I mean, well, we have, I don't well, mean it that way. <laughs> in the sandwich situation, David. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and can we have our first mystery guest, please? Patient's doing fine. 
<laughs> Use your great gift of communication to tell it's me what like, you've got it so far. Is it like a wanna, like a young lady wanna? <laughs> it's it's in there, anyway. Jesus. Mrs. Howie. <laughs> No. Give us some names of some Greek female athletes. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? It's like an arse. It's an arse, isn't it? Oh, Christ, I think it's a bloke. It's a bloke, sir. <laughs> Please, Christ. I remember it, Tony. Uh, <laughs> it's the smell of a man. <laughs> it's the smell of a man's arse. I didn't agree to this. <laughs> What did I do? Right, you're, on, you're on your own. Get Get back here. Don't leave me with a bloke with a heavy arse. No, you're on your own. Maybe the best month of my life. Is it that middle? Is it the man in the bins? No, he's in the middle. 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 I hope you enjoyed that one. Can you recognise the smell of a man's arse so easily? I wonder if there's any possibility I could just have a moist towelette. Okay, um, Gary and Rory, if you could take your positions, please. No, man. That was so horrible. You loved it. I quite enjoyed it. I'm a slave to my needs. Nice, eh? It does look great. I'm glad you come out finally. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Shame, you, me, and Julian, let's go out and get a tattoo later. <laughs> and can we have our second mystery guest, please? enjoyed the last bit so much that he couldn't help himself. <laughs> yeah. OK, your 90 oh, yeah. seconds start now. Oh, you got... I don't know who's but they're nervous, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> this is my only... I've got a blow <laughs> here. Did you get me? <laughs> Sorry, Gary. Yeah. It's a horrible one. You're good, you're good. Camden Town, this time I night, no f***ing way, mate. <laughs> it's it's a car. Cool. The car is covered in cow shit. Whoever <laughs> <laughs> did that, I've got most of them. Um, <laughs> uh, name a name a oh rally car. <laughs> rally <laughs> car. I only know one. Do you want these winners, dude? Do you want these winners? <laughs> name a rally driver. God's sake, I'm gonna get changed. Colin McRae. Yeah. Correct. Three oh. points. Oh. And the scores at the end of that round are David's team with 11 points and uh, Gary's team with 13. I'm going to do the next round, for God's sake. It's like Gary's done a dirty protest in it or something. Yeah. I've got a wedding That's tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> you know, Nick, when I was younger, this was evidence of a bloody good night out. <laughs> I mean, if the room wasn't like this, we hadn't had a good night. <laughs> We end as normal with the name game. The team in the lead goes first, which at the moment is Gary's team. So uh, Rory will be doing the clues. Um, we'll pass that along to Rory. As many names as you can in the next 90 seconds. Oh. And your time starts now. 
This man is ginger, he wears a ginger hat. And when he saw the Gordon Strachan. Gordon Strachan, Gordon Strachan, very good. Uh, bald, slaphead, uh, geography teacher from Harrow <laughs> County. David Otto. Yes, this is um, uh, a Brazilian footballer named after the famous German Count Otto von Bismarck. Very good, thank you. I've got an intellectual on the show at last. Um, <laughs> prodigiously <laughs> membered ex Cambridge United striker. <laughs> Dale Man with a big dong, that means. Yeah, I've got anything with that. Um, I think this woman is a judo player. Um, Play um, <laughs> what do you call it? Um, what perspiration, right. perspiration, perspiration. Sweat. Not a woman. Not a woman, Gary. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sweat, Sweat man. man. And her girl's, the girl's name at the beginning. <laughs> Rina is close enough, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, a famous homosexual writer, Chris. Oh, sorry, Quentin. Gary. Sorry, Quentin. Quentin and um, Smellia. Smellia. It's stinky. No, it's me, it would be stinkier, wouldn't it, Gary? But this is yeah, no, really no, if it were pongy, it would be pongier. Yeah. <laughs> Boardman is Christian name. Boardman's Christian name. Chris. And what are these called? Lips. No fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Lip. One. Lip. And what do horses do when they're not going very fast? They canter. Trot. 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 Okay, they've moved on to 20, so you need... Uh, 20? Yes, 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 yes. 10 will win it for you. Uh, starts <laughs> now. Uh, tennis player, French, not the lessee, the other one. The one who's built like a... Uh, <laughs> Le Maison yeah, Merde yeah. de Concrete. Um, Brick oh, That's Pitt. it, yeah, the one who's... Mary, 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 Mary Pitts. Pitts, you got it, okay. Uh, this bloke, second name, uh, he sounds like um, he should be with Johnny something on the Pirates. Remember him? Johnny, no. No. No, not big on music. Okay, it's a young goat, a baby goat. Kid, baby, kid. Yeah, there you go, that's right. Okay, uh, this one's got... Brian Kidd. Uh, Alright, second name of this person is ridiculous, very daft. Um, Silly? Simmer. Uh, first name is, uh, there's a song, Drink, Drink, Drink to the Pink. Lily. Lily. Le yeah, and the second name is like someone, not a million miles from who's a bit basically losing it, to be honest. <laughs> Ross? Is it yourself, John? He might be <laughs> sitting between you and I right oh, now. Lily Gower? Yeah, there you go. Okay. Um, this bloke, I felt his ass no. earlier. Um, um, Very slim. There you go. Um, ah, here we go. Could be anyone, Jonathan. <laughs> um, this one, uh, it's very similar to the last answer, but not quite the same. Uh, it's another word for buttock. Cheeks. Yes, and the first name is a uh, sort of Ponzi Italian -y sort of deal going on there. I don't know, it's some bloke. I left my heart in San... Uh, well, there you go! Francisco! Man, how easy is it, wasn't it? All right, this is... Oh, Jesus. Uh, I almost felt this earlier, but fortunately there were some pants in the way. Second name. Cock. Um, this is what I've got to work with. Well, <laughs> no, it's what the telephone does. <laughs> That could be really? the Clint Eastwood voice. What was that all about? <laughs> Why did you have to be Clint Eastwood for that? What's wrong with you? <laughs> all right, wing, yes, and yeah. the first name, it's, uh, it's a little, you'd make, uh, if you did something with a pen, you'd leave a on the desk. Uh, Mark. There you go, okay. This is uh, it's a cricket player, second name describes what used to happen to everyone when you played. Lose. <laughs> We've moved on to 17, but the winners this week is Gary's team with 20. <laughs> so, our thanks to David, Jonathan and Jeff, Gary, Rory and Gary. We're all off to celebrate last night's Champions League victory by the English runners-up over the German runners-up. My name's Nick Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now. Nick Hancock and the teams are back later in the year and Frank Skinner is joined by David Essex and Charlie Dimmick in a moment here on BBC One.